Well, we're all fired up for another Algebra 2 lesson here, and tonight's title is Intro to Exponential Functions. We've been working a lot with exponents over the past couple of weeks, and now we're, it's time to apply it to functions and see the role they play. Now, well, prior to uh, this lesson, we, we've spent all of our energy on polynomial functions, and it's important to differentiate the difference between a polynomial function versus an exponential function. And within that family of polynomial functions, the three most popular ones were We'll start with linear functions here, and uh, this is a family that we're very comfortable with. We spent a lot of time with linear functions, and the standard form was, you know, usually we'd say y equals mx plus b. And then we graduated to quadratic functions, um, where the, the graph was a parabola, of course. It either opened up or it opened down, and the standard form was ax squared plus bx plus c. And then um, another popular version that we didn't spend a ton of time on, but we've done a little bit, is the, the cubic family. So just staying in order, it goes linear and then quadratic and then cubic. And all cubic means is that, that it's a third degree polynomial. And now today we're going to put all our energy into exponential functions right here. We're going to talk a lot about what the standard form is and you know what role um, all the different, um, or rather the role the different components within the function play. So first and foremost, what's the general form of an exponential function? And it comes in the form of y equals a multiplied by b, which is raised to the x power. Um, and that exponent only applies to b. Now what are the key characteristics that distinguish an exponential function from a polynomial one? And the key here now is that the exponent is now where the variable lives. So the exponent is where the variable lies. And that's how you distinguish the difference between a exponential function versus a polynomial function. And it's also worth noting that um, the numbers a and, and b are constants, or what we call constants. And that's just a fancy way of saying they're plain, plain old numbers. A lot of times for us today, you know, the values of a and b are going to be 2s, 3s, 4s, 5s, you know, maybe 10. They're not going to get too crazy. So when we consider that standard form or that general form, y equals a times uh, the quantity b being raised to the x power, we want to ask ourselves, what, uh, what role does the value of a play? And simply put, a represents the initial value um, that corresponds to when x equals 0. A lot of times, we'll use exponential functions to describe the population, and the letter a will it'll be the initial population of a city or town. Um, what role does the value of b play? Now this one's a little more complicated. First of all, b stands for the base, which makes sense. Um, now there's two conditions to focus on here. Most likely b is going to be greater than 1. Okay, And if that's the case, we have what's called exponential growth. And your graph is going to increase at an increasing rate. In other words, it's probably going to look like this. Okay, However, the other case is if b is less than 1, but still positive. In other words, it falls somewhere between 0 and 1. And now we call it exponential decay. In other words, your graph's going to be decreasing at a decreasing rate. And it might look something like this. Okay? Um, we have the first part of tonight's video is designed to kind of review everything that you were exposed to in Algebra 1 with exponential functions. Um, you probably spent time talking about the y-intercept, which is typically 1. You might have talked about the idea that there's a, um, a horizontal asymptote here, some kind of invisible barrier that the graph uh, won't cross through, things like that. And so then the second half of the video is really aimed at introducing you to some new ideas and some advanced concepts within the realm of exponential functions. So let's talk end behavior now. A um, little different than polynomials. In polynomials, we said uh, if it was an even degreed function, the polynomial either you know starts high, ends high, or starts low, ends low. And then with odd degree polynomials, if it started high, it'd end low, or if it started low, it would end high. That type of stuff. Well, with these exponentials, it's slightly different, but we'll use the same notation for the most part. There's two cases I want to examine. Case number one: What is the end behavior like if b is greater than one? In other words. If, if the graph looks like this, okay? Let's talk about the far left side, in other words, the left end behavior, which is this area right down here. And what I would say is, as x approaches negative infinity, f of x, which represents the height of the function, approaches zero, or aka the x-axis. Now, if I talk about the right end behavior, which now we're focusing on this end of the graph, we'd say, well, as x approaches positive infinity, 
f of x, which again represents the height of the function, is approaching infinity because it's going upwards. All right, now I said there's two cases. The other case is, what happens if the value of my base is somewhere between 0 and 1? And now we've got a decreasing function, right? So let's draw ourselves a little picture of what this might look like. Most likely it's going to look something like this. All right, so when we talk left behavior, left end behavior, we're focusing in on this side right here, this arrow. And we'll say as x approaches negative infinity, the function is approaching a height of infinity, a.k.a. it's going up. Now the right side of the graph, which is this section right here, uh, as x approaches positive infinity, f of x is approaching, any guesses? Yeah, hopefully you said zero. Okay, the next three examples we've put in our notebook and discuss are going to be very similar to each other. And by the time we're done with those three, we're going to kind of pause and look back and reflect and ask ourselves, you know, what role did this three, the base, play in my function? And um, what role did this two play? So right now, this exponent is the value of t divided by two. t is my variable, much like x is. We're going to find out that x's and t's are pretty much interchangeable. T just represents time. Maybe, uh, I think in this case, it's measured in minutes, it says. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is just complete the following table of values. And in order to complete that table of values, I didn't do anything fancy. I just plugged this right into my calculator. I went to y equals and entered that and just copied down the table. The initial value of y is always going to be the value that corresponds to t equals 0. So I'd say the initial value was y equals 1. And they said, well, if t is measured in minutes, how long does it take for the values of y to triple? Okay, so let's start with, well, we started with a 1. And then by the time we got to t equals 2, it tripled itself. And then by the time we got to t equals 4, it tripled again. It went from 1 to 3 to 9. So I said approximately, you know, or I shouldn't even say approximately. I should say exactly every 2 minutes the values of y are going to triple themselves. And notice the 2 that you see here corresponds to the 2 we saw up there in the exponent. So a very similar function here. Again, it's exponential just because of the t being located in the exponent. Therefore, we'd say it's not a polynomial. This is an exponential function. And really, the only thing that's different is this 4 we, we inserted right there. And so the question now becomes, what effect does the 4 have on the values in this table? And does it change either uh, answer to these two questions here? So again, nothing fancy. I'm just going to plug this function into my calculator and go ahead and enter, complete the table. So um, notice my values uh, went from a 4 to a 6.9. So there was like about a jump of 2.9. And then I jumped all the way to 12. So then the jump was about 5.1. And progressively, the jumps um, between successive values get bigger and bigger. And that's uh, typical of a function that increases at an increasing rate. Um, now as far as the initial value of y, again, that's just going to correspond to the, the first value you see at t equals 0. And so we'd say the initial value is y equals 4. And again, how long does it take before the values of y triple? And we say, well, we went from 4 to 12, that tripled, and then from 12 to 36, that was another triple. So about every two minutes again. So what you're really seeing here is this value dictates the initial value. And this value up here dictates how long it takes before they triple. And the idea of tripling comes from the base. Uh, last question of this similar type. Again, very, very similar to the first example we did two slides ago, except I changed this from a 2 to a 5. So now the exponent's t divided by 5. I plugged it into y equals. I'm going to go fill in the table here. Well, I cheated just a little bit. I kind of just picked out the nice values I saw of y. I didn't worry about all the decimals just because of the questions they were asking. But as far as the initial value, that'll again be the value of y that corresponds to t equals 0. So y equals 1 is my initial value. And how long does it take before the values of y triple? Well, in this case now, it did... It, it, when I got to 2 minutes, it hadn't tripled yet. I had to wait all the way until I got to t equals 5 before that initial value tripled. And then again, we had to wait till we got to t equals 10 before that value then tripled itself. So I'd say every 5 minutes, the value of y is going to triple. And again, you can kind of see where that corresponds uh, to the 5 we have hiding up there in the exponent. So reflecting on the last three examples, we want to ask ourselves, what have we learned or what could we surmise? So in, in this first example here, um, again, it's an exponential function because of where the t is located. Um, and we could say that, well, the 10 here, that's my initial value. So I'll put a little iv there. That's, uh, you know, so when t equals 0, the y value would be a 10. And then what we're going to say is that these y values, they're going to double. 
Notice I didn't say triple. They're going to double because of the base right here. This number right here, B, dictates whether we triple, double, whatever. We're going to double every how often? We're going to double every four minutes or seconds or whatever the unit of time happens to be. And that four dictates how long it takes before we double. On this next example, we'll say 15 represents the initial value. And then in this case, we're going to quadruple. Why do we quadruple? Well, because of the base here was a 4, we're going to try quadruple every how often? Well, what are you dividing the t by, really? Um, just a 1. So we're going to quadruple every 1 minute. Well, we're going to try it first here on this slide. Um, what I've tried to do is I've tried to embed a video just within our video, and we're going to give it a shot. We'll see if it works. But here's the story. It says, assume that there's initially one centimeter of water in a tank and that the height of that water doubles every 10 seconds. And the, as soon as you see the word doubles, you, you kind of got this feeling that it's exponential in behavior. They want you to write an equation that can be used to calculate the height of the water in the tank at any time t. So let's go ahead and, and I'm going to try to play this video here if I can. Maybe. And so what you're going to see here in the lower left hand corner is this is how many seconds has elapsed. And right now you see like it's very hard to notice uh, whether the height of the water is increasing or not. And that's because the, the tank is so deep that it's a negligible change so far. But be patient. And eventually we're going to start to notice a, a change in the height here. Starting to grow just a little bit. And now you're going to start to see it take off like a rocket. Remember, it's doubling every 10 seconds. Every time 10 seconds elapses, it's doubling its height. It's going real fast, real fast, and boom. So one of the things that, uh, and, and it's, it was kind of wild, you know, almost half the video had elapsed and we hadn't even noticed a darn thing and then at the end it kind of took off and we want you to gain an appreciation for the power of exponential growth over the course of these next few days and um, one example might be you know imagine um, your parents made a proposal that uh, they want to they want to give you a daily allowance and on the first day of the month they wanted to, uh, your allowance was one penny and you're like oh that's a rotten deal and then each day thereafter your allowance is going to double so on day two you'd receive two pennies and on day three you'd receive four pennies uh, four cents would be your allowance and so forth and so forth and my question to you tonight is would you sign up for that deal but and maybe you could try to figure out what exactly would my allowance be on the 30th day or the 31st day of the month is that is am i getting a good deal out of that or are my parents kind of in a sneaky way ripping me off so um interesting uh it'll be interesting to hear your thoughts on that tomorrow so here, back to that original question that we just proposed uh, before watching the video, I'm going to try to write an equation for that function. And instead of saying, um, you know, f of t, uh, we're going to use the notation h of t because uh, h represents height very nicely. And uh, for my initial value, I'm going to use 1. And then for my base, I'm going to use a 2 because they talked about the water doubling. And they said it's going to double every 10 seconds. So I need to d divide that t by 10. And that's going to kind of offset it and, and delay the doubling until the 10th second and so on. Now, how would that equation change if the initial depth was changed to a 3? Now, that's only going to impact one thing. And that's the value of a in this case. And that's, so instead of saying 1, we're going to say 3 times 2 uh, raised to the t divided by 10 power. What if the initial depth was 400? Again, I think it's important for us to appreciate that the only thing that that changes is the a value. The base is still a 2, and the exponent is still t divided by 10. And one more time, just to make sure we've got this down pat, if the initial depth of the water was only one-third of a centimeter, well, we just start with a one-third instead. But we're still doubling, and we're still dividing the t value by 10. Okay, if we go back to that original function that we built in the very first part of the question, what would change if the height tripled every 10 seconds? So instead of doubling, we're now tripling. And basically, that's just going to change my base. Um, it shouldn't affect anything else. The initial value would still be 1. We're now base of 3. And the exponent is t divided by 10. Now, what if we tripled it every 25 seconds? Now that 25 is going to affect what I'm dividing by up there. It's almost kind of like a delay factor. Uh, we said, you know, we don't want it to triple until we get to the 25th second, um, so we kind of divide by 25. Quadrupling, that's going to affect my base. So we've got initial value of 1, we're going to quadruple it, and it's going to be every 2 seconds, so I need to delay it by dividing by 2. And then if we get cut in half every 10 seconds, 
let's see, we're going to have a base of one half and then t divided by 10. So I hope we feel really good about, you know, what role the 1, the 2, and the 10 played in this function. Okay, we're going to switch gears just a little bit. We're going to combine this concept of average rate of change, which you've studied since Algebra 1, and we're going to start to apply it to exponential functions today. So before we do that, I did want to expose you to this um, very yucky, yucky uh, definition, but I think it's ex good to expose ourselves to it and just get used to this type of vocabulary. So they said we've got a function f whose do domain contains the interval of real numbers between a and b. We're basically just saying that function f is continuous for every value between a and b. So it might be from 0 to 5, might be from negative 1 to 10, you know, any interval and it's defined for all values. And the range is a subset of real numbers. Um, the average rate of change on that interval from a to b is defined by the number what? And it's more of a formula. We don't think of it as a number usually, but really it does come out to be a number in the end. f of b minus f of a divided by b minus a. And by the time I work it out, it does become a number. So in our last slide here tonight, we've got a scatter plot, and it shows the amount of lumber in feet produced by a single tree based on its age. And so it looks like they picked out seven different trees. Um, maybe the age is 25, and uh, it really didn't produce, uh, you know, much uh, lumber. You know, and I'm picturing maybe how many 2x4s they could make out of the tree and adding up all the lengths of all the 2x4s, and that would equal the number of feet and so forth as we go down the line. It seemed like uh, the older the trees got, the more feet and lumber they got. And it kind of looks like if I was to kind of do a best fit curve, the curve might go kind of through here. And it does behave like an exponential function because it looks like we're increasing at an increasing rate. And so what we want to try to do is we want to try to uh, estimate the average rate of change in the amount of lumber produced by a tree over the interval 25 to 200. So what I need to do is I need um, f of 200 minus f of 25 divided by 200 minus 25. All right. Now, it's, this is estimating, so we might come up with slightly different values. But uh, what I was thinking was here at about 200, it looks like the feet, it's, it's a little over 300, so maybe like 310 minus. And at, um, let's see, when the age was 25, boy, it's it's a very low number. I'm you know I'm gonna say it's not zero, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just say a five. But again, we're estimating, so we could maybe argue on what that value should be. And then two hundred minus twenty five is gonna give me one seventy five, which, when rounding to three decimal places, gives me one point seven four three. Now let's talk about the units on that particular number. Uh, both numbers I had here in the numerator were measured in feet, and specifically hundreds of feet. Whereas this number here was measured in, it represented the age of the trees, which was in years. So that's 1.743 feet, 100 feet per year. Okay, now they also wanted me to explain what that number represents within the context of the question. And here's what I want you to really focus on today. We're going to practice this tomorrow for sure. And it, it took me a few seconds, but here's what I came up with as I wrote my sentence. And I said... <clears throat> And, you know, using the context of this question, I said, well, the amount of lumber produced by a tree, and this is a good word, increases. And I use the word increases strictly because this number here, this value, was positive. If, if this value here had been negative, then I would have used the word decreasing right here. At a rate, again, very important that we use the word rate because we are measuring the average of all the rates uh, of change within the, over the life of the tree at a rate of 1.743 feet per year. Um, so a couple of key words I want you to talk into your sentences tomorrow, uh, increase or decrease, depending on whether this is positive or negative. And again, let's make sure we're using the word rate, very powerful word. Basically, it's, it's associated with the word per. So anytime it's like, you know, something per something, what you are is you're describing a rate. And again, I'd be interested to hear your comments on whether you want to sign up for that allowance plan of one penny on the first day and doubling each day thereafter. Uh, have a great night. We'll catch you tomorrow.